so there would be more of a necessity to catch more balls in the air if you were risking a lot more. Certainly if you took a big swing and then the bounce was bad, the odds of something bad happening went up. So if you look at the older players, a lot of the way they played is because of the surfaces they played on. And so um, I was well taught. I still think it could be very successful style of play. I can't speak to how the coaching is because I don't know it well enough. I can only tell you that what I want to do, because I've just signed on in New York to do this, what will be announced next month at John Mackinac Tennis Academy at Randall's Island, which is, uh, for New Yorkers, is sort of a pretty meaningful place um, and has a history underneath our what used to be called the Triborough Bridge as you come into New York from the airport. Now it's Robert F. Kennedy Bridge. Um, that uh, these are the type, I, everyone comes to these grips like this now. You know, these Western grips, and they're taking huge swings. They go for winners on the first ball. They miss six or seven out of ten balls, and then they think that they're just going to hit their way out of it, which I think you sort of have to work. You build a house, you don't put the roof on first. You, know, you got to work your way up. So I'm going to try to teach kids that. It's be exciting, and whether or not people just assume that I was a natural, so how can anyone play like that? And I. I, I it will be a nice challenge to see if I can get in these 8, 10, 12-year-olds when they're still impressionable, maybe up to 14, to see if they can alter, not necessarily change everything. Because certainly there's an advantage, sometimes taking it high, there's an advantage to having a grip like this as opposed to, say, my grip, where it's tougher to take it up high and really attack that. And if a ball comes up high, sometimes it's better to have, you can more easily use your wrist to come over it. So there's... And the disadvantage, you get low, you have to get under it so that you can alter that. I can use a continental grip like this, and I can use my wrist and make it seem more like a western without changing my grip at all. So, so those are the type of subtle things. If you're stuck over here, it's tough to sort of maneuver your way back. That's why you see guys have to struggle with those low balls coming into net and volleying, they have to switch. So. So we'll see. So if you had to go out and play in Dow tomorrow, how would you handle it? Well, well he's throwing well, those huge balls at you. And you got the, the ultimate challenge to me would be playing um, Nadal on clay, obviously. The, the guy's uh, Borg was the greatest guy that I'd ever seen on clay, and, and his record proves that until Nadal's come along. And as you can tell, there's not a whole lot of guys that can handle that. Uh, he's basically has been virtually unbeatable in the French Open. If you look at a guy, you know, the guy Soderling 6'4", uh, so he's better able to handle a high ball. Those conditions that day were were heavier, so the ball actually didn't kick us up as high, which would be advantageous. But at, at the end of the day, it would be un unbelievably tough, but I would try to be able to be, you know, take it to him. That's, it's not like I'm going to sit back. <laughs> but, but when you're younger, you're better easily to take steps back and wait for the ball to get low. It doesn't mean I have to hit every ball here. I would choose to take some balls early, especially the second serve, and try to be aggressive on it. Other ones, you have to sort of wait, uh, and, and you've got to be have exhibit some patience and wait for a shot that you can do something with. That is clearly hard because he does something I've never seen someone do, which is to seemingly be in a really defensive position off his back foot and use his right hand. He's a natural righty and generate this incredible pace off his back hand. His back has more consistentness for it, actually has more oomph on it quite often. So he's he would be... Uh, Without a doubt, the toughest guy to deal with on that surface. Any other questions before we hit the court again? Any you of your children playing this? Uh, it depends how loosely defined I'm playing. <laughs> I have two boys that are now 23, 22 that play high school tennis. One, both went to Division three colleges. One's going to graduate next month. The other one's graduated. He played college tennis for a year. He was a uh, big guy, six, three and a half. Both are big guys, uh, six, almost six two. Played a nice game, but they, I think, wisely chose to sort of, in a, a real serious way, stay away from it. He didn't like his teammates, he said, so he quit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but obviously, it was in part that what the expectations were. I think, luckily, a knock on wood, they're good kids. Um, and I have a daughter who's 14 that hits a good ball, but. In order to be successful, you really have to, obviously, this you see that in, in both the men's and women's game, the, the, this athletic, athleticism is improved, and so you have to have, really be committed. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to play, in my opinion at least, six hours a day when you're 12, 14, or at any point, really, but you certainly have to be involved in other sports and playing regularly and be well coached at a young age and be committed, especially balance, footwork, these type of things that need to be taught. I, 
I know they're trying to do that, the USDA, my brother's involved there, and that's what I'll be trying to do, obviously, and that's not something that's uh, time signing and that you need to be on balance and get yourself prepared and ready, and the, the, deba the, the basic things are a lot more important than they seem. All right, let's uh, cycle into doubles here, and then let's do it.